Hello, Blake Root is here with the F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today I want to take a deeper look, like a, a deeper dive, essentially, into the profiles that have been added into Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom with this most recent update. So what I want to do is just show you some images and just talk about the difference of what happens with and without the profile. So let's go ahead and hop into Adobe Camera Raw, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so what I have here are six images that have been edited, okay? And I'm not gonna show you how to edit in this video. What I really wanna focus on is the profile what the profile is, and, and if it even makes a difference. Does it matter? So just to catch you up to speed, Photoshop and Lightroom have been updated so that now Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom both have profiles in a more prominent location. I say that because profiles have always been there. They just haven't been the easiest to find. They used to be in the calibration section. Now they're in the basic section. And basically what it is, is it's, it's, a, it's a layer that goes over top of your raw file that has some settings inside of that profile that make your image look different and you might think, well, that's that's a preset, Blake. Well, kind of, okay? A preset will move the sliders on your image, whereas a profile lays on top of that and doesn't adjust the sliders at all. So it gives you a lot of control over your image as you process. So that's catching you up to speed. If, you'd have, if you don't have uh, these profiles in your uh, basic settings right now, right now as it stands, go to Adobe Creative Cloud and update your Creative Cloud subscription on both Lightroom and Photoshop so that you you can have access to these. Make sure you update both Adobe, Photoshop, and Lightroom, okay? Um, now, everything works cross-platform. Your presets and your profiles work between Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. So let's get into it. So really what I wanna do is just talk about this image right now and what, what I did to this photograph and how I edited this photograph. So the first thing I do now with these profiles is I go in, I press the profile that I want, and then I go ahead and modify my settings. So you see, I'm using the profile as a foundation for my work. So what I did here was I went with one of my more grungier profiles. And just look at the settings and the profile at this point. So if I come up to this profile and I just drop that profile out completely, this is what it would look like without that profile. So if I change that back to 100% on that amount, here we get that gritty, edgy kind of feel in the image. Now what you're seeing, when I drop this profile out, it's not changing these settings down here. Watch what happens. See, I still have access to these settings right here. What, what happens when I drop that profile, I'm just making it look like that profile never existed on my image, that I never used a profile. So what I did by, by using this profile is I just got myself a gritty base image to, to start from, and then I built my settings upon that. So here's the settings that I used to create this image. So I essentially used that profile as a base to build my settings upon. And the profile makes a huge difference because if I change this profile to something like Adobe Standard, which is what would be the typical profile that we would start with if we didn't have one set, either Adobe Color or Adobe Standard, this is what the image would produce. The exact same thing as me dropping that uh, grunge profile out there uh, altogether. So, you know, that question, okay, these profiles are cool and all, but do they really matter? Yes, they do. And they matter because when you use them, they can alter your image and create a nice foundation for you to build upon for the rest of your photos. So this is another example right here. With this example, if we were to look at our altogether beginning photo right here, this was a long exposure at the Louvre. I was trying to get some of the people to disappear and kind of vanish away. So I used a 10 stop ND filter. And I don't care who you are or what ND filter you own, every single ND filter that has come across my desk has produced some type of blue color cast on the image. So what I did was I created a profile for this that would offset that ND filter. So when it offs after it offsets the ND filter, then I can go in and make the modifications to my image. So if I were to drop this out completely, this is the resulting image that I would get with the settings that I used for this photograph. The profile makes a difference. Here's another example of a reason why the profile makes a difference. So if I were to drop the profile out, this is the image that I would get. Putting that profile back on, it's a subtle difference, but it's a difference nonetheless. If I were to choose a different profile than the one I chose here with something like the Adobe Portrait, I'm gonna get an altogether different look because what's happening is the raw file is here, the profile goes on top, and then the basic settings and the local adjustments go on top of that. 
So you can actually pull out that part right there that's the profile. You can just slide it out and slide another one in, almost like transparency film over top of your image. Your settings stay the same. Your basic settings, your local adjustments, anything you do like that stays the, cha stays the same. The only thing that changes is when you change the profile or the foundation layer that you start with. So when this new implementation of profiles came out in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom, the first thing I did was I brought about 100 images into Adobe Camera Raw and I said, okay, does this really make a difference? Let's just play around with this because I'm the, that skeptical type of person when something new comes out where I'm like, yeah, you can't penetrate my bulletproof workflow. There's no way. Well, then these profiles come out and add something totally new to my workflow that, that really makes sense. And it's, it's, it's phenomenal. The more I used them, the more I practiced, the more I played, the more skeptical I got, the more I tried to, you know, break it or say, no, this isn't going to work in my workflow. The more I realized that I just need them in my workflow. So as my workflow changed, not necessarily, uh, all I do now is I just add a nice profile to be the foundation that I build the rest of my image off of, then move into Photoshop and still do my Photoshop work like I always do with my zone systems and palette effects, okay? So nothing has really changed. I've just added a little bit of that profile implementation into the beginning process of my image. Here's another great example. So the new black and white settings in here are stunning. They're absolutely gorgeous. In the past, I you, you can yell at me, you can throw tomatoes at me if you want. I've always said that black and white in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom is practically pointless because the black and white wasn't very good back then. The reason why I said that was because when you do a grayscale mix, all it would do was desaturate your image and then let you make colors get lighter or darker. There's something weird that happens here. I can't explain it. I can't put my finger on it, but some wild stuff is happening in these profiles now that make these black and white in here just absolutely incredible. So if I just go back to the beginning of this, this is what this image started as. This is, I think, a, a 300 millimeter lens shot. So we got a lot of distance between me and those mountains back there. And it was a beautiful sight, but when I shot it, it just didn't come through as beautiful as I saw it through the camera. This would have been an image that I probably would have said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and throw it away. But I decided, no, let's change it to black and white and see what we can do with the new black and white features in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. So what I did was I used one of my new profiles here called Landscape 6. Landscape 6 is a default black and white, and then I built my image off of that. Look at how powerful this is right in Adobe Camera Raw. But it doesn't just happen like this with the click of a button. I had the foundation set with that profile, and then I built my settings on top of that with the basic and the local adjustments. So there's been a lot of skepticism around these profiles, and are they actually you know worth it? Do they do anything? Are they great? What what are they even? Uh, should I even bother? Well, check it out. If I drop this amount down, this is at 133. If I drop this amount down, this would be the black and white conversion that we would get without using one of the profiles that I created for landscape black and white images. Look at that. Wow. That's incredible. Okay. So let's move on down to this image. So uh, this photograph, if we look at the before, here's the before with no settings and no profile. And here it is. If I drop out that profile, just drop this down to zero, uh, adding that profile here, added some character to this image, some life to this image that didn't exactly exist before. Look at that beautiful starting point. The, but here's the deal. If I didn't use this profile, this would have been my result. Okay. Using this profile, I was able to get a whole different look out of this. A whole different foundation was built on this image that I could then move into uh, Photoshop and, and even build even more off of that. This is one of the profiles I created called Sunset Sunrise 03. Moving on down, here's an image that I took in Olympic National Park. Love the foliage that was happening there, but nothing that I did, I, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest here, nothing that I did could pull out this kind of look. This is one of those instances where the profile makes all the difference. So what I thought was, okay, if I can't get my settings just right on this image to make it look like this, um, straight out of Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom without doing a ton of Photoshop work, what can I do? Well, I created a profile for foliage. Here it is without the profile. Okay, here it is with the profile. Look at the difference there. That autumn foliage just blows out at you. And if it's too much, you can always drop that saturation a little bit. There's no problem there. Look at that. So that, that's great. It's a great starting point, a great foundation for this foliage-based image. It's gorgeous. So do profiles make a difference? All I'm doing with this whole discussion right now is just making a case for these profiles to say, yes, these profiles make a difference. And in case you're wondering where I got all these profiles from, you know, the grunge one that you saw in this image or the ND offset in this one or the portrait one in this one or the uh, landscape black and white that I used for this photograph or even the sunset, sunrise or the foliage, 
I've created a bundle of profiles called Great Beginnings. It is a foundation of profiles. There's 40 of them that you can use in your images. And the most important part about this profile bundle pack though is the education that comes with it. Because I wanna teach you and empower you to create your own profiles so that you can make your workflow more efficient with the images that you use. So I'm getting you started with the profiles that I've built and you can build upon that from there with the knowledge that I'm going to give you in this course. So again, all this was, was setting a case and, and a reason for using these profiles and to not just look at these profiles as being, oh yeah, it's a cool new feature. No, this is breakthrough features, okay? Breakthrough, I love it, uh, I'm, I'm stoked about it. So again, my name is Blake Rudis. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, tell a friend, especially a skeptical friend who thinks that these new profiles are worthless, okay? I just wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it and have a great day.